Drafting Archetypes is brought to you by Game Grid Lehigh. Game Grid Lehigh is an amazing place to buy and sell Magic the Gathering singles. Whether you're building a new cube or crafting your new constructed deck, Game Grid Lehigh is the place to do it. Got a draft coming up with some friends? Buy some seal product here and get it quick. So click the referral link in the description to help out the show. And don't forget to use the code DRAFTPRO10 to get 10% off on your next order at gglehigh.com. Hi everyone, this is Sam Black with Drafting Archetypes, and this week I'm going to talk about White Black in Brothers War. As always, the notes are available if you want to follow along at uh, patreon.com slash drafting archetypes. So let's get right into it. White Black is the second least frequently drafted color pair ahead of Simic in this set. Uh, it's also among the least successful. I don't have any secret insight that is going to be like, if you draft it this way, then it's actually super good and you should try to do this. Whereas I did feel like that was kind of the case for blue. I don't think that that's the case for white black. That said, this also isn't an archetype that I think you should like try to avoid or never play. I think white black is very good at doing one specific thing. And that thing is abusing creature bombs, especially uh, bomb creatures that cost three mana or less, because you get Airlift Chaplain and Ravenous Gigamal both dig for creatures. And then you can also play Emergency Weld and Recommission to get them back. And so Siege Veteran, for example, uh, one of the best cards in the set, obviously, is the best performing card in white black, uh, you know, ahead of like Gix's command and stuff. And notably, it wins more in white black than it does in decks in general, even though white black wins less than decks in general. So it's performing like appreciably above expectation due to uh, the surrounding synergies. So if you have something like a Siege Veteran or Misery Shadow or Loranda the Third Path or Gix, then I think it's that's a good time to potentially look to be uh, white black. I don't think you should force it, but I think that it's a like good time to try to do that thing. So I think that you know I, I often try to talk about like when should you do this, and the answer is you should do it when you start with like a really strong rare creature that you want to make the most of. And it's best if that creature costs three or less, but the fundamentals can still kind of work with Ravenous Gigamol if you have, you know, some like good expensive, like Silver Seraph or whatever, um, some kind of just any bomb creature. Jumping ahead in my notes a little bit here. One of the steps in preparing for this podcast was I looked over the recent trophy decks on 17 lands that were white and black. And most of the trophy decks uh, were extremely attrition focused. It was basically just like a lot of removal and bombs and then like some cheap or value creatures, but like more removal than decks normally have and multiple bombs was kind of the formula to get a trophy with white black. So not something you can plan for, Kind of the generic, you know, control spot where you should only try to like draft a really controlling deck in a lot of limited formats if you have like bombs that will reward you for extending the length of the game. White Black plays long games pretty well, provided you have those rares to abuse. It offers a lot of removal at common, especially if you're just kind of trying to prolong the game and you're willing to play some slightly lower. Uh, tier removal. Um, white and black both have playable removal spells that go pretty late if you're just trying to trade off and stuff. It's not hard to have the removal portion of the like bombs and removal formula for white black. Given that that's the goal, it shouldn't be surprising that the most played and successful common for white black is airlift chaplain. That's going to obviously do a lot better if you have really powerful rares for it to find. Further, this uh, best performing uncommon is Recruitment Officer, 
which again is another way to dig for those really good rares and stuff. Um, also, both of these are strong when you just fill your deck with cheap creatures, which is kind of like what the white black thing is telling you to do. What's a little bit more surprising is that the second winningest common, notably with a small sample size in white black, is Boulder Branch Golem, the gain life artifact that had uh, prototypes for green mana, which I think speaks to how controlling and grindy this deck is trying to be. You're generally, you know, you're, you're just like playing a long game. It's not unreasonable to cast it for seven. That can like stabilize you, uh, gum up the ground and then let you win with flyers. Maybe your opponent kills it. Maybe you get it back with like an emergency weld and cast it again. You know, I, I don't know that you should be prioritizing Boulder Branch Golem super highly, but it is a reasonable card to include, and I think more importantly, tells you something about uh, just like the strategic positioning of this deck. So I've been pretty clear about the fact that, you know, as far as like tempo to attrition, that spectrum that I talk about, this deck is clearly going to be very far on the attrition end of that spectrum. You're looking to, you know, trade cards, prolong the game, generate value. Uh, you're not really trying to end the game before your opponent has had a chance to cast their spells. That said, there's something interesting going on with flyers here, because I think that flyers are pretty important to white black when you don't just have like a bomb that's going to win. I think your like secondary plan is to uh, like ping your opponent with like little flyers while you've established kind of a ground stall. That kind of raises a point that I think is pretty interesting that I hadn't really like thought of in these terms before, and I suspect a lot of uh, listeners also haven't thought of in these terms, is when you're trying to play this attrition game, if you can gum up the ground such that, you know, an extra creature without flying isn't a meaningful card, and you can kind of define the axis of uh, relevant interaction as being like flyers and answers to flyers, then um, you can kind of generate virtual card advantage by gumming up the ground and have some flyers thing that one might often think of as being a tempo strategy. It really like doesn't have to be. It can be an attrition strategy where, you know, the point is it wins eventually, but also you kind of set the subset of cards in the game that actually matter to a smaller subset that you're good at generating an advantage among. Like, I have more flyers and more removal than you do. The ground creatures are just going to stare at each other. They're not what the game's going to be about. And now it's easier for me to kind of control the skies and win that way. Very classic Orzov thing to just kind of try to, like, stall out the game while you have something going on that's kind of nickel and diming draining your opponent out. Uh, in this context, that's usually going to be flying soldiers. But you, you could also just be stalling for some kind of over-the-top bomb. I should note that while it seems to me like Emergency Weld and Recommission are pretty core to what's happening here in terms of uh, reusing your strong rares, both of them have pretty middling stats. I suspect that most of the time you don't want to like fill your deck with a whole lot of them. You just want to be prioritizing, you know, that stuff that's going to kind of get you on the board early and uh, removal and like creatures and stuff. Like you want a few of them, but you shouldn't like go crazy with it the way that I might in like green black. Um, your creatures outside of any of those bombs that you find are a little lower impact in general, um, more replaceable. So. Taking a step back, ignoring stats, but thinking about kind of what I've said about the uh, strategic role that you're looking for here, my approach to drafting white black would be, you know, of course, don't try to draft this without a bomb creature. Uh, and then once you're in this, regardless of whether you have one, hopefully you have one, but maybe you just, those were the open colors, uh, prioritize ways to get the bomb creature back if you have it. Um, also ways to like find it. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, flyers, removal, and creatures that are good at stalling the ground. And then, you know, of course, as I mentioned, think of yourself very much as an attrition deck. You really shouldn't be trying to run people over. You should be looking for, like, sources of card advantage and removal and all the typical control type stuff.
Incidentally, Aeronaut's Wings is reasonably playable here, which is kind of interesting because a lot of the time that you're playing an attrition strategy, equipment's not really where you want to be because you're kind of like down a card. But getting back to what I was saying about kind of defining the terms of interaction as being flying creatures, then it's, you know, makes a little bit more sense that Aeronaut's Wings is a little bit more capable of grinding on that axis if you can make that the relevant axis. I do think that this is a pretty straightforward archetype, given that I think it kind of has to be, you know, in this attrition space, uh, really controlling, going to care about creatures that cost three or less most of the time between uh, airlift chaplain, recruitment officer, here are the dunes, recommission. Um, so you're, you know, prioritizing those over the more expensive creatures most of the time, looking for flyers. The biggest exception to the expensive creatures is the scrap works are both very good because you're, you know, going to be milling yourself some. So getting in the graveyard is good. And then those are kind of some of the best ways to like get your card advantage and gum up the ground. Yeah, as noted um, in chat, uh, Re Warlord Elite is a pretty respectable way to gum up the ground, especially since, you know, you're prioritizing cheap creatures. You'll often have some of those in play before turn three that you can cast, uh, use to cast it. And then it's obviously very good to recommission because you get a 5-5, five, five, which is very big in the format, especially early on. So that's it. Super straightforward. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Twitch chat for any questions here. As always, I would thank my new patrons here. Uh, no new patrons this week. As always, encourage people who are interested in the podcast and potentially supporting the podcast, getting some perks, uh, discounts on coaching, access to logs and notes and stuff like that to check out patreon.com slash drafting archetypes for all the details on that stuff. First comment is difficulty figuring out whether it's better to take a land or a two drop versus making Chaplain a 2-2 flyer with uh, just in terms of gameplay with Airlift Chaplain. I've generally been happy with when in doubt at all, uh, just take the extra card. I really like extra cards. I do think that sometimes power in the air is the thing that matters, but like I said, I'm hoping that I don't care how much damage I'm doing as much as I care that I'm getting something through and the one one is often going to be able to get through and that's you know enough to like be a card which is all i'm really looking for there next up will you play carrion crawler or whatever the two one flying insect is i would hope not to it's a low tier you know playable nabbing something from the graveyard matters the damage matters it's a flyer i i don't think it's embarrassing but you know i'm kind of allergic to windrakes and obviously there are a lot of cards that are just better I feel like white black is like weak enough that if it's not so open that I don't have better stuff than that, I've probably made a mistake in drafting it this time. Again, unless I'm here because of really strong rares. Next question, is this an archetype where you're looking to splash? Uh, reasonably happy to splash here. Um, again, you're playing long games. Like anytime you're attrition rather than tempo, you're more likely to want to splash than if you're tempo because... You're just going to be seeing more cards, playing a longer game. It's going to be easier to find your mana for your splash cards. It's not going to hurt you as much if you can't uh, play them early because you'll still have a lot of game left by the time you can cast them most of the time. I mean, like, stats-wise, Skyfish or Spider has, like, better stats in white-black than Hero of the Dunes does. So that kind of supports this idea that, you know, if the cards are good to splash, then it's very much worth doing so. Yeah, definitely a place where I'm looking to splash. And honestly, most of the time, I'm just looking to take fixing because I'm not looking to be white, black, splash. I'm looking to be something else and white or black splashing the other of white and black. But, you know, the, the drafting for that early is kind of similar, right? You just have an openness to taking cards in another color and an openness to taking fixing. And then you just figure out like which colors are the most open and what you want your base to be. Yeah, a note from chat, it almost feels like there's so much recursion and protection tricks in white uh, and or black that going straight white black is too much recursion. It ends up being very redundant. I mean, partially you're just not really looking to prioritize uh, the protection tricks. Like you're probably gonna prefer weld to uh, escape in white black. 
But yeah, you certainly need to watch out for not having too much of that because there is just a lot of it available. Would you include a five mana flyer like Aeronaut Cavalry in the deck, or are you specifically interested in three mana or less flyers? No, I'm I'm very happy to play Aeronaut Cavalry. You don't want a lot of top end, but that's kind of the exact right one. Um because it's a like very relevant body that makes one of your other bodies more relevant. You it no it, cavalry specifically is very good. Like you don't want to play like trench stalkers and stuff, and you're not excited about amulets or anything. But uh, aeronaut aeronaut cavalry is the exact right five. I would be happy playing multiple of them. It's a card I'm actively looking for in white black. Would I say that green black white and green white black fit the same ideas as white black? A lot of the time. I mean. There's certainly overlap there. Like, I think all of those decks end up being, you know, they end up taking a controlling role in most of their matchups. They're usually not, you know, they're usually more attrition than tempo. Even when you're, like, doing the uh, base green, like, stalwart thing where you're generating extra mana and stuff, a lot of that's about, like, not falling behind, but, you know, doing a lot of grinding. So uh, I do think that... uh, the whole kind of like Abzan space can play pretty similarly most of the time, which is part of why splashing in any combination there tends to work pretty well because like all of those color pairs are pretty similarly positioned in the format. And so just like mixing them together makes sense, especially when you get like the Prowler that's giving you more mill and more fixing and more cheap stuff, which is like exactly what White Black was looking for anyway. And then the green cards like slot in really easily and help your mana work. And yeah, I I think part of why white black isn't great is because it's just like, well, why not green? So there's a question about three, four flyers and white in general, like just how to figure out when they're good. So (laughs) I don't want to like go on record as saying like five mana, three, four white flyers are good in magic because... Setting a baseline like that feels like the kind of thing that's not going to age well because <laughs> of, you know, power creep. But I do think that more often than not, like, 3-4 flyer with an ability is a pretty good common. I think they're generally intended to be good commons, and I think, like, Aeronaut's Cavalry functions well in this set. I mean, it's often 4-5 worth of stats across multiple bodies, some of which kind of has haste and the rest of which has flying. Um, it has a lot going for it. Uh, but, you know, white three, four flyers for five at common are usually, man, there have been some really bad ones, though, now that I think about it. Like in uh, the, like, Midnight Hunt or whatever, the three, four flyer that exiles something from the graveyard, that's a much less relevant ability than giving a plus one, plus one counter to something. And it also lined up worse in the format. That's why, Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if there's a good like general how good is this slot kind of uh, thing. I, th- I think my short answer there is trying to evaluate like this kind of role in the set. How good is it in sets in general? Is kind of a trap. Like all, all especially just like among commons. I think wizards kind of intentionally mixes that up you know some some sets shock is an amazing card sometimes it's like pretty bad sometimes you know four mana instant exile creature is great sometimes it's fine not seeing any other questions i guess i'm going to wrap it up there i do think this is a very straightforward archetype as i mentioned also honestly as i said this isn't an archetype you should be drafting a lot i do think that it's Good to know what to look for when you do have, uh, you know, a Misery's Shadow or Siege um, siege Veteran or something. But for the most part, yeah, I think the conclusion that there often isn't a good answer to, but why are you this instead of, uh, you know, this with green or green with a little bit of whatever's pulling you into this or something. Maybe the real answer here is you should just be thinking about the stalwart green episode uh instead of this if you're tempted to exist in this space or even the green black episode but uh you know sometimes green's not open (laughs) anyway that's gonna be it for this week i will be back next week uh with another archetype thanks for listening and bye for now (laughs) 